Hi guys, Niklas Bauer here again from Fly Dressing and welcome back to Thai TV. Today we're going to tie this. Short, articulated, uh, really jerky fly with the uh, fantastic double tails from Paolo Paccarini. This fly is heavily inspired by Paolo also um, and uh, I kind of like tweaked it a little bit to, to, um, to my own or at least inspired a lot from him. So, but we have been fishing a lot together and, and this is a fly that he's been using a lot and I think it's a really cool pattern. I make it a little bit more narrow and slightly more high so I get an even more side to side action. But the cool thing is uh, with these flies, in my opinion, is that they sink well, they hook really well, and the fish, when they're, when they're not into these bigger dragon tails, stuff like that, this is really, a, really a good pattern. When you fish a roly-poly, it really swims like this because of this tail works, working as a rudder. Uh, and when you stop it and really jerk it with long pulls, it really makes that side to side. Um, super cool pattern, quite easy to tie, and not super time consuming, uh, especially if you kind of like, prep all the material, it goes quite fast to tie these. So, uh, XL double tail uh, with a fast attach, so you can change different colors. We're gonna do its bucktail, some flashaboo, uh, head of uh, Titan dub, the new Predator eyes, and we're gonna use a, a, a UV resin, which is called Flexman from Gulf, which is a little bit flexible, so, um, so it's very easy to, uh, to make it kind of a little bit high and narrow, and it's also very flexible, so you can, it takes a lot of beading without breaking. Simple fly, easy to cast, swims like nothing else, so let's go. We're going to tie this on a 2-0 and a 4-0. If you want an even bigger one, you can tie it on a 4-0 and a 6-0. And if you want an even smaller one, you can take away the back hook and use a shank and just a 4-0. Uh, and you have, um, if you don't want to use the two hooks, uh, and then you have the same action, uh, but just one hook less or slightly smaller also. Um, I'm tying this on the Erex TP610, which I think is a very nice hook. Uh, very good all-around wire thickness, so it's strong, so you don't open it. Uh, but it's not too heavy, so it sinks too fast. And what I really like it, it's the hook gape, which is wide hook gape, and it makes really nice hookups. So that's a good hook. Uh, start with the 2 ohm Put it in the waist. Uh, and that's normal. Let's glue the thread to the hook, and that's normal. 100 denier power thread from Techstream, super good thread. Nowadays in 100 meter spools for almost the same price, so thank you for that, guys. Uh, all the way back, we're not going to tie anything behind the barb, so we come down in the slope, so try to keep it where the hook is still level. We're going to use some uh, fluorocarbon. This is uh, 60 millimeters, so it's 44 pound fluorocarbon. 40 pound fluorocarbon is fine, but you're only going to do this for the extension for the um, double tail. Uh, we don't have to use, of course you can use titanium here or if you want to use wire or whatever, uh, it's up to you. But uh, I kind of use nylon or titanium in these depending on what's on the fly tying table. Uh, the cheaper version is to use uh, fluorocarbon uh, or nylon. Um, here is up to you how far you want to have this kind of like sticking out. Uh, I'm trying to usually do this around five centimeters. So this is six centimeters. So uh, it's a little bit longer than average, but I thought I'll extend it slightly. Um, the problem with fluorocarbon on nylon or something, and especially if you take it straight from the spool, is that it has a little bit bend to it. So I usually, when I do this at home, so I pull out a few cords, uh, like one meter cord of them, put them in a little bit warmer water, pull them, put a weight down, and I just hang, let them hang there. So I always have straight fluorocarbon for the tying, but there's some different ways you can do it. But uh, it's not so nice when you have this pointing up or pointing downwards, but we just have to live with that today. So we're not going to put any hook or anything in this, so it doesn't matter that we're using fluorocarbon. Uh, so now we have to remember that this is going to be, like the tail is going to be here, so it's going to be slightly longer. And this is the XL size, by the way, so it's the biggest size. So we're going to use some bucktail. So I prepped it so we can speed up the process of tying these flies a little bit here. Um, it's also a good way if you want to tie really consistent and, 
and fast tires, tying flies is to prep your work. Bucktail from the tip of the of the bucktail, so we have less air and less flare in this material. Try to get it uh, all around. Give it a good pull here. So we have a nice and strong thread base. Move the fibers uh, on each side. So now the these are around like one to two centimeters longer, which is I like because then we can have the tail incorporated in this. So we're not so it doesn't look like the tail is behind the fly. It's kind of like into the fly. So that's the minimum I want to have it. So when you do this, you lift these up, put the scissor straight. And you have a nice taper there when you do this, and do exactly the same thing on the other side and you get a nice taper to all the material you cut off and you're not going to have it too bulky. I'm not going to run any flashable here, I'm just going to keep it white. Uh, I'm just going to put some uh, Palmer chenille in medium. This is a pearl version which I think is really nice. It makes a quite natural look to it. So we're going to go all the way forward. Put a drop of super glue there, and also where you have the th thread base there, because when you're starting to catch a lot of fish on this, uh, this eventually is going to break. Uh, but then you don't have any any other part of the fly breaking, except that this is going to come off. But it doesn't really make any difference when the flies are really chewed and well fished. So we just wrap this. What I like with the palm chenille is that it only has the fibers on one side. So it doesn't build too much bulkiness where I don't want it. If you use some of the other chenilles or body materials which has material on both sides, it can be too bulky on certain flies. So it's the right material on the right place on the fly. All the way there. I'm going to tie this off. I'm going to make a few wrap over that. So that's going to be basically the flash we have in the rear hook. At least we're going to have, of course, if you put a like a really flashy tail to it. You're going to have more flash. Fishing these with a silver tail is usually a really good thing too. But the first flash I'm going to put basically now here when we're going to go over with the white again. So a slightly bigger bunch of white. And we want to continue the rules here so we don't want to have these pointing longer than these. So it's going to be something like that. We're not going to hollow tie this because we just get too much volume in the tail. So we're just going to tie them in the normal way here. And uh, have this nice and spread all around here. Work a little bit with your thread forward. I'm doing the same thing. Lift this up, twist it, cut it off. It's usually a really a good way to get it nice and tight here. Oops. So we're gonna tighten that up a little bit. So now I have material all around this. I, I kind of like to have these like bulky and not super flashy but much more flashier in the front than in the rear, but we're just going to throw a little bit of a mixture of gold and and olive here. And if you want to know all the fly, all the material that are in this fly, there will be a description uh, in the uh, or a or a material list in the description below the film, so you can find it on YouTube. So not too long here. 
and I'll try to, this is half of the normal length of flashable. So it's just divided and mixed together just to get a nice mixture of this. I'm going to continue this fly slightly lighter and with a olive touch in the front so I don't want to overdo the color changes. I want it to be very light in the back um, but I still think it's good to have some color there. So I'm going to put some super glue on the thread here. I'm going to make a nice strong head here. Some whip finish. And we're going to cut that off. So that's basically our rear hook. We can steal all these copper dragon tails here, or double tails. So we can put that on so we can see how it's, so the length of it. Now you can see that these are basically, this is nice and freely, not being too much interfered, but still it looks like it's the part of the fly here. So, so I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm going to go into the uh, 4 I'll do the same again here. I'm going to put some super glue on the thread. Or on the hook. Just attach the thread in the wet super glue. So we're running um, 40 pound, 49 strand partridge um, wire here. I like it because it's 49 strands, so the metal strands that it's made of is, is quite thin, so it makes it very not uh, chinky, so it stays really, yeah, it doesn't really tangle or, or kink and uh, it also is very easy and strong to use. So we're going to tie this on opposite side here. So I'm going to tie this laying flat uh, facing away from me. So now it's facing you. I'm going to cross wrap this backwards here. So I think, of course, you can do this in a little bit different way. But for me, I think this is what makes them tangle the least. So then we're just going to use two of these six millimeter articulated beads. I'm going to do a gold here. And we have to have a salmon egg color too. So we get that nice trigger point here. So we're going to run the gold first, and the orange fluorescent orange one after. I'm going to take the fly, go through here, go through the beads. Try to make sure that these are not, the wire is not too um, tangle in between here so it's so we can have it lie lay flat on both sides here so we just quickly just going to tie that in and now we just basically have to adjust this a little bit so I tied a few thread wraps here just to be able to kind of twist and turn here because if I'm twisting the wire you can see this loop here is twisting so if it's not straight, you can always kind of twist it so it's straight. And then you can put the pressure on the thread and you can make it straight. And then I want to have this loop here almost slightly the same size as one of these beads. And then the last bead here should be kind of resting on the hook bend. So support in there, same size, and the loop is straight towards the other one. So I think I'm happy with that can always go a few thread wraps kind of like down in the slope here, not too far. But that's a little bit depending on what 
some tires want to be a little bit further down and uh, I wouldn't say I'm the master of articulated ones so there are some different ideas but the most important is that the flies swim well don't tangle too much and of course don't break so so we cross wrap this a few times so we have a nice and strong position here we put some super glue over all these thread wraps here like that so we have this so now it's good to kind of get the total length of the fly here now because now we need basically to adjust all of the material we're going to add on here so we get that right um, uh, yeah right taper to the fly so this is the longer one this is the second one so now we want to basically move this into the third one here now so we're going to do um, a few wraps of pearl here first just to make the transit over from the last fly here or the, the back hook I'm not gonna do too many wraps here but I don't want to I don't want to go into too dark color right away I want to go a little bit lighter first like that fold those back so make sure that that's dry and then we're gonna run this is a mixture of olive and white so um, it's 50 50 so which I'm going to use for and if you want to see how you do this there's plenty of videos showing how how I'm mixing these together so I'm not going to show that for the 30th time here but um, nice mixture which makes it uh, has a nice transit from white into olive so we're gonna same length here so we're gonna be at least not really half but but shorter than the previous one here so we're gonna push that around here go all around with your thread make sure that they are nice and spread all around the hook like that thread pressure and we do the same here again we kind of like lift it and cut it with a nice taper and it's not going to be too bulky when you tie in the next material so let's see what my mess I've done now okay so here we go so as you can see when I'm working with the thread forward I get a very nice and, and, and tapered thread slope here which is not going to cause too much problems. So I think it's a good way to do it. We can add some, uh, some olive, this Flashaboo dyed olive which I think is a beautiful color especially if you're doing like this type of idea kind of a dirty roach pattern becomes extremely natural and insanely beautiful in the water uh, I mean this looks pretty cool like it is now but when it comes in the water and a little bit of sunlight on it it's really badass so nice carpet tied in around uh, 60 40 or 70 30 Try to get it spread, maybe not evenly around it, but at least on the top half. We're gonna flip these, so we get a little bit shorter and durable flashable around here. So I'm gonna do it like that. Okay. Something like that. That's normal, drop a super glue here. 
we're gonna go into uh, same polymer Chanel in medium. First, this is an olive. I'm gonna go into a slightly darker transient now. So we're gonna go all the way forward here. Here, if you want to have the fly extremely bulky, you can use like a filler flash or something which is much, 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 much more bulky. But I wanna keep this slightly less bulky because I want to have a fly that it's easy to cast uh, even when it's heavy winds and not really super tough. So basically we're gonna end it there I think. Gonna go there. So we're gonna have another we're gonna have another bucktail collar in front of this. So this is going to be one of those that's going to build up some of the volume here. So we have that, we have the white in the tail here. So now we're going to do an olive one, which is quite bulky here. I'm going to take some of this olive and I'm going to throw them on the existing mis mixture I had left there. So we're going to run that for the belly side a little bit. And then we're going to have this nice olive for the top here. Just gonna mix these together so we have a slightly lighter belly. You can just roll it between your fingers when you mix these together. Have a nice mixture. So we're gonna run this slightly shorter now. And we're still not gonna hollow tie this because it just becomes extremely bulky here, but we're gonna hollow tie the next one. So we tie this in, in the lower part here. We're gonna tie this longer one, olive here, on the top. So we have quite a lot of material here, so we have to kind of pull quite hard so we get the thread pressure all the way down to the hook. So it's a little bit lighter now, on the belly and more slightly darker on the top here. As you can see it's also slightly shorter here because of the taper of the ends here. So, I'm just gonna go a few thread wraps here. This is going to be slightly bulky here now because we are going to run some, um, quite a bunch of ripple eyes here. So this is something we're gonna tie on top of this. Like that, we're gonna tie it basically 50-50, so 50% in the rear and 50% in the front here. Before I flip it over, this is gonna be a lot of the flashable that's going to be hidden basically into the pattern here. Here once again, if you want to, you can add uh, some body material, but I don't really think it's necessary because it's basically only going to, it's not gonna be visible. So I'll rather just have a na naked hook and keep the fly slightly lighter instead. So we're gonna go with the thread forward here. And now basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a bucktail, some ripple eyes again, and then we're gonna make a head from, uh, from Titan dubbing. So, so we wanna build that a lot of volume and then we're gonna compress it a little bit so it becomes a little bit more narrow. So the last bunch of bucktail, which is gonna be olive. And I'm gonna take slightly more because I really want that head to be 
pushing a lot of water. So, so it's really a bulky head, which is going to create a lot of water pressure and make it swim a lot. I'm not going to use all of this, but I wanted to mix it together a little bit to get the longer fibers. I can get here. So now I'm running. Now I'm running um, bucktail from the lower part. So I have a lot of, well, it contains much more air, which is going to make it flare in a completely different way. I'm also going to hollow tie this to create as much volume as possible. So, of course, I don't want to have these too much, too long compared to the other one, so we are going to hollow tie it and we're going to reduce the length of them, something like this. Kind of push the fingers through so we have the hook in, in the center of this. Going to go one, one, two, and the third one you can start pulling. You're going to have that bucktail. If you have chosen it from the right part of the tail, you're going to have a very nice flare to it. Like that. And we are going to take a hair clamp, see if we can have it situated like that. And we are going to take most of this away here, because otherwise it's going to be quite tough to fold this over and create and, uh, and create the head I want to have on this fly. So we're going to go like this, see if that's going to fold off or not. So there we go. Let's see where I have my thread here. So now we have kind of a, like a really, really strong and bulky head here. And then we're going to reverse this. So we take whatever reverse tool or pipe you have in handy, kind of like force that down. So you get those fibers or those bucktail fibers to go in the right direction. And take that hair clamp over and as usual you're going to go straight 90 degree and then we're going to start creating that support color for this. One thing is when you have a lot of hair like I have now just to get that tough color here is to kind of like support it with a few wraps of glue like that because otherwise the, otherwise the thread wraps are going to start kind of folding down and then it's going to be hard to maintain that that uh, angle. So it's good to have a little bit of super glue on the thread when you're doing this quite a when you're pushing the thread wraps against the bucktail collar because it's quite aggressive uh, but on the other hand as soon as this gets wet you know you're going to reduce some of the aggressivity of the of the fibers so so it's a little bit better to use that otherwise they, the, the the thread has a tendency to kind of skip down and fold down and you don't want to have that you know so so um, f just cheat with some super glue I think it's a good way and uh, so we're going to build up this so we have a level thread base again here we're just going to run a few of these ripple eyes because they're just so cool in this color so we're just going to make them as long as possible here. So I'm tying these baby basically 70-30 now just to get that length as long as they can be. Fold them over, build up so we have a, um, a nice level place here to, to play around with the head tiny drop. So now we're going to make a head of uh, tightened up here. 
And uh, what I like with this is it just makes that fly uh, super good looking. It has it's a synthetic dubbing, but it's just to have that all those things you want to have. It's easy to make the head. It's really simple to glue the eyes on, and you have that nice transit over to the other material. So so it's just a in general very very good way to to get them to continue back in the in the same material here. So we are going to use a color called Sunset, which is, as you can see, there are a lot of fluorescent stuff in this. And uh, that makes it look really cool, at least on the UV light or black light. So good thing here, keep the fingers onto the dubbing where, you, where you're pulling it from. And you kind of want to work with these so you get that, keep that length of the fibers. You don't want to compress it and, and make it a, a thick. You want to keep the volume of the product. So we're going to tie it on the top here first. So we're going to tie it basically 60-40 or f almost close to 50-50 here. Let's see if we need some on the, on the belly. We usually need. Let's see, just slightly more here. Well, so if you haven't tried this type of material before, it's, you should really do it because it's so simple to make nice heads. And also, it's a little bit, it's not so slick material in the water, so it actually kind of reduces the, the fly's speed in the water, uh, which I really like too. So it's hard to say, but a, a very fast material, like a flash up or stuff like that, makes the fly very fast in the water. Uh, materials that are a little bit not so slick, it reduces the speed. And uh, sometimes it feels like that's a little bit like the key. So we're just gonna flip those over. Kind of go through over there. And we're gonna kind of end that. I should have had an olive pen with me, but I only got a black one, so let's make a black head on this one. Just have to live with that. So, some glue on the thread again here. Oh, we're just gonna kind of like make a few thread wraps there so we secure everything here. Tighten that together. And it's time to put some ice on this bad boy. So this is really one of those flies that if you want to see how it looks when it's been fished or, or at least used, you basically need to push it under water uh, before you use it because all the bucktail which we are creating now to get that volume, it's all standing out. But if you just push it under, for example, uh, running water and just leave it to hang like this, you're getting much more of that profile that's going to be. So uh, it looks a little bit extra bulky now, but as soon as you use it, it's going to get that nice fishy shape, shape to it. So uh, we're going to use some um, predator eyes. This is, I think this is the eight millimeter size, but it's the middle size at least. These are very fluorescent and I really like the shape of it because they're, they, they look a little bit angry. Um, so we're going to put these on. So take the dubbing needle, push it where it's kind of the thinnest, it's not where it's the thickest one, where it's the thinnest one. Put some super glue onto it. Press it down on the, on the fly here. And the good thing with these are that they're slightly softer than a lot of the other stick on ice. So you can actually kind of bend them a little bit if you want to. Same thing on the other side here. 
but if you wet your fingers, you can get all those thin fibers away. Like that. And now we're going to make this head using a UV resin called Flexman. And uh, what we can do then is we can determine how we want it. If you want to have it, a, if you want to have a very round head, uh, one of the key things is, in my, in my opinion, is to go like this, and then you just push it out like this. Then you get a very round shape to it. Uh, but now I want to have kind of a quite flat head because I want this fly to really go as side to side. So then you have to be a little bit more tricky with this. So we, first we're going to start by filling the gap here and we're going to fill in the gap here. Then we're going to lay it flat and then we're going to cure the sides. So it's a little bit more tricky, but it's not, not something anybody, everybody can handle. So. So we fill this in here. And always stroking the glue into the same direction towards the back, you know. So if we're gonna go from that direction, it's so easy to pick up the fibers. So now we can do this and we can push it back because we're gonna push it together later. So we're just going to get that high profile first. So it's not going to look super natural, but it's going to have a really nice swimming shape. Takes a few seconds. So now we have that high profile. So now we want to get it a little bit more flat. So what I like to do is I put the vise like this. And I, and I put the, uh, the resin around the eye here. And I also kind of like hold it like this when I cure it. Because then you can see you're going to get that nice and high wide profile to it. And then we're going to do the same on the other side here. So it's quite important that you're, it's, you're a little bit level. So give it a good push here. Not too much, but oops. So now you can see you have, we have a very narrow and quite high head, which is when you pull this, every time you pull it, you know, the, the head and the fly needs to take a decision if you're going to go right or left, because it's not going to go, the water pressure is always going to go on one side like this, just like a jerk bait. So the higher and narrower you're going to have it, the more it's going to. And also short, short and bulky, it's really going to make those good turns. So, so now we're done with that. Now we're just going to make uh, a nice cover of all of this. Here you have to be a little bit careful because if you do this a little bit too slow and uh, the UV resin is warm and stuff like that, it can be easy to have a drop in your knee. In your knee. So I recommend you to have like a blanket or something. So you don't ruin your pants, but we made it this way. So just rotate it and then just start curing it slowly while rotating. You create really nice heads. The good thing with the flexible thing is that it's, it really lasts forever and it becomes like a single unit together with all the fibers and bucktail and eyes and everything like that and becomes so strong heads, they're almost, yeah, impossible to destroy. So, let's see what we have here now. As I said, this looks so much better when they've been used once. 
but at least you get the idea here. So we have a, almost like a bream pattern here, so they're quite wide, as you can see, also very flat. Uh, nice fish-shaped um, fly here. So two hooks, so it's going to keel very well, and it's going to make that side to side if you fish it really like aggressively pulls. And if you fish it roly-poly, it's just going to swim like this, and this tail is going to work as a rudder. So super cool pattern. Uh, and the original pattern from this is from Paolo Paccarini. But a good overall, kind of a dirty roach, tied in all different colors. And of course, the good thing with these is if you want to have a dragon tail or a wiggle tail, you can just swap it over and you have a cool fly which you can fish with a big dragon tail. So, so here, I got lazy and didn't do, didn't do any stripes on this, but if you want to, you can just take a marker and do some stripes on them. Or you can even have more ripple eyes here. I have some orange too, so you can see the different variations of the same idea here. But uh, with stripes, without stripes, but the same idea. Uh, high, narrow head, uh, which is creating a lot of movement and slightly shorter flies. Not that hard. And of course, if you want to win this, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and you might just have this in your fly box. Good luck and see you out there, guys. Thank <laughs> you.